were speaking up about fifth edition, uh, mm -hmm. we should go ahead and flip the page and talk <gasps> talk about Arcadia. Okay, Arcadia. Oh my goodness, um, this is amazing. I, I'm a huge fan of this. Um, this is the third issue here that we've got the cover of. Um, mm -hmm. Arcadia is created by Matt Colville's company, uh, MCDM, and is amazing. It's mm -hmm. I. Do you do you grew up with uh with Dungeons or Dragon magazine? Uh, right? Both of them, yeah. No, I, yeah. I I had a subscription to both of them, and then I bought that cool disc that came out like in the late '90s that had yeah. all of them on it. <laughs> oh wow, that's amazing! <laughs> I think I remember that. Uh, I never had either one of them. Never saw it. So for me, this is like something I'm experiencing brand new. Right, this attempt to create a fifth ed version, like an online version of that magazine. Um, and it really it really feels like it. Um, yeah, we'll we'll go ahead and and just pop like one of the things that I kind of remember in being being really interesting in in the old old Dragon magazines was the letters from the editor, right? Mm -hmm. So we have a, a a nice letter from the editor talking about like the journey. Originally, they were only going to do a couple of issues, but people love this, you know. And it's it's kind of nice to see some of that insight from from the the managing editor. And in this case, it's right. uh, James Intracasso. Yes, James Intercasso, uh, who has done a ton of writing for Wizards mm -hmm. of the Coast at this point, um, and uh, one of the adepts on the DMs Guild. So, I love this because I, I know these freelancers, like I know all of them who are here in this book. Um, right. And so it's kind of like a, uh, like I was telling Justin, kind of a best of, right? They're, they're, they're grabbing all of these amazing folks and putting them together uh, to put out uh, an incredible magazine. Yeah, and this this month they have the Dreamkin, which are a few very interesting races that kind of um, deal with dreams and deal with that whole kind of, uh, I, for lack of a better word, like <laughs> that 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 in the ether type of mm -hmm. cosmic stuff. <laughs> right, right. Uh, which we get out of you know, uh, plenty in Forgotten Realms. But Eberron has a lot of of dream stuff in it, in particular. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, great, great new uh, new creature types that you could pay, possibly play. But also the art is incredible. That one there for uh, the sand speaker in particular, just all that kind of like colorful glass work it looks like is, I mean, they're, they're not messing around on their yeah. art budget here either. <laughs> no, no. And that's that's definitely one thing I can say about this book is is the art within it is spectacular. Um, I'm I'm really pleased with the, the, the three races they have... Uh, given to us here um it, they, they seem well balanced uh they have interesting powers they'd be interesting yes. to have at a table mm -hmm. uh you know like this this one called astral architect you know so when you reach third level you can cast a talk thoughts as a trait and i think that's pretty cool like it's it part of your trait is that you kind of can can understand the way people think and and one of them mm -hmm. has the ability to uh, enter someone's dreams uh which i believe is right. the first one i can't remember the name but that's okay um <laughs> yeah and then uh with this one this this is i really like this so when when fifth edition Ooh. first came out <laughs> One of the yeah. things I was really looking forward to was was I had the old spell books from second edition, like for mm -hmm. both the wizard and the cleric. I have all of those. And I was like, oh, man, what spell what weird spells in here have to be in fifth ed? And uh, <laughs> they have they have started to do that. So some of these spells are uh, from uh, second first edition, second edition. I think there's a three five one sneaking around in here. Um but yeah. once again, once again, here, I, I got to get to this. So we've seen Glitter Dust, Permanency. There we go. Rainbow Recurve, right? This is, oh, I think, right. <laughs> this, is, this is, I think, from third edition. But look mm -hmm. at this art. This art is, is, yeah. you know, that's fantastic. That's Wizards of the Coast level art. So Exactly, exactly. Um which which I love. It's just it's not only this like honestly like this love of the game finding new ways to to look at D and D. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit uh, mm -hmm. later here, but uh, but I love that they're focused on the art and this great design. Like there's it's just it's so they were planning to be amazing like right from the start, and I feel like they succeeded really well. Yeah, I I, I like the weakened at Bernie's spell where uh, you can cast it on one of your dead companions. And they uh, will follow you around for ten days. 
normal stuff. <laughs> yeah, so 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 yeah. far we've gotten three new races, ten new spells, and now we're gonna have some new rules for expanded aerial combat. This takes a lot of things I've seen in some other systems, as well as a lot of really new stuff that to deal with flight, because flight's a, a, mm -hmm. a interesting and complicated thing, especially in fifth edition. Mm -hmm. Um so, you know, we're we're not going to spend too much time on any any one of these pages cuz you need to go read the book yourself. <laughs> right. But this section is really cool for, really you know, is. to bring out for uh, an incredible encounter or oh my gosh, if you want to have races like flying, you know, uh, huge competitions or anything like that, this would be amazing for like an extended bit. Uh because then your players would learn how it worked and then also get to kind of expand on it a little bit. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's very it, cool. Yeah, I've I, I've re I was reading this, and there's definitely some things that I kind of want to borrow from this whenever I do a Starfinder campaign again because the space combat is fun, but I think it it needs a little more pizzazz, and I think this, yeah. this has some of that pizzazz that I I was looking for. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and, uh, it, and then it, yeah. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, and then it gives you a sweet sample encounter to kind of mm -hmm. use the rules and understand the rules, which I think is really smart whenever you're doing a, a custom rule set for oh, yeah. for 5e, you're, you're, you're expanding on these rules. You should give examples of play uh, so that people can kind of work it out and understand it. Yeah. Right. And then, of course, right afterwards, there's an entire adventure. And this is not a short adventure. No, <laughs> we're on, no. We're on page 26, and this is a 40-page document. This is going to fill up most of the rest of it. Um, yeah. Well, one thing I, I, I do want to, once again, there, there's something I like about the way that they've done this, and it really stands mm -hmm. out to me. I like the arthurial intent. It, I agree. It gives you a great idea of what the author's thoughts were when they were were. were creating this adventure when they were designing it how they expect you to kind of play it that you know there's a lot of stuff that's really cool that you can stick in there that would help guide gms who 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 pick this up off the shelf who pick this up on drive through rpg you know those types of places that they're ready to go and uh yeah i like mm -hmm. it a lot i do too i mean it gives the author a lot of voice i mean and it kind of gives you a very quick way to kind of explain why the adventure is how it is so mm -hmm. as mentioned yeah. here right the mystery is not particularly complex right it's a it's a lot about when do the characters see what's going on figure it out and then start moving through um so i expect mm -hmm. we're going to see a lot of pieces in here to uh, to get that ball rolling and get the characters towards uh towards the big finale Absolutely. It, it, it just to kind of point out this a little bit, the adventure hook for this adventure is uh, the Crystallum family hires the characters to investigate the theft of money and jewelry. This might be through a letter or request, a messenger, a friend of the characters, or simply an uh, advertisement on a notice board. The payment for the job is 200 gold pieces per character. That's enough to get your characters in it. That's, that's, that's all right. you need. You have this nice hook. You have a couple of options to get it to the players and bam good to go <laughs> and then of course right here you have the page to print out and just hold on next to you throughout the entire adventure the the manor map and the major characters that are going to be here yes. um <laughs> we played a party recently in our, our pathfinder game and i just basically drew this exact page on a piece of paper <laughs> mm -hmm. uh right in front of me just because i wanted to know what everything is yeah um, this one also has some really fantastic i don't want to spend too much time on any of this just in sure. case somebody wants to try to uh, look at it, but you know more fantastic art like this. This this beautiful elf uh, is here, but the one that I really want to get to, yeah, the next is this beautiful Zorn. one. Uh -huh. This one, this one's so pretty. <laughs> this is the the prettiest Zorn I think I have ever seen drawn ever. Yeah, um, yeah, it's it's pretty great, and it, it I I like that that gives you some tips on role playing to Zorn too. Right. Um, <laughs> You know, Zorn, mm -hmm. Zorn, can, and and it's 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 true. Zorns can be reasoned with, and yeah. they 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 highlight that in a couple of books with Zorn in the past. And you can offer them coins, metal, gemstones, those types of things, and uh, and you can ally with the Zorn temporarily until they right. their hunger hunger comes again. Uh, I like it. It's really <laughs> like this is a thing. I mean, like I said, this is the third issue of Arcadia. It's a thing that they're doing is creating these these ways to expand play a little bit you know a lot more things in these books are falling into the exploration and role-playing buckets um sure there's combat stuff of course but but trying to make it a little bit less just about you know running through the monster manual from a to z it's uh which i like a lot so i love that call out specifically in here 
Yeah. So uh, the the authors in this book were uh, Justice Armin, uh, Celeste uh, Konowich, Sam Manel, and uh, Alison Huang. Yeah, uh, it's a yeah, it, fantastic it, it, group. <laughs> they are they're, they are all a great group of of authors. And here is the thing that I feel like all of these uh, publications need all the time, and that is uh, resources with links to the maps right. that you can uh, then put into your tabletop program or you can print it out and it's just right there for you ready to go i mean it's so easy since this is not designed to be a print publication right right uh you get this for for seven bucks on uh from mcdm um or uh or as part of their patreon as well if you're you know going all that far yeah. um but uh, it's a really cool thing that i'm glad it exists because like i said i, I didn't have D dungeon or dragon um this is a version of it that kind of speaks to me about kind of the, the modern game that I like a lot. Mm -hmm. And honestly, since it's done really well, I'm starting to see other people do similar things. So if this sparks like a renaissance of uh, <laughs> magazines for RPGs, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Um, yeah. I, I, I haven't looked at the other two. Have you looked at the other? Or this, is a, this is issue four, not three. Uh, have you, Oh, no, this is three. Have you looked at this the other three. two? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they are all. Eco I'm trying to remember exactly uh, what was in some of those, but uh, but they they also kind of like they have this like um, it's not dreamlike, right? I mean, specifically we get dream characters in this mm -hmm. one, right? But it is this this sense of not just the regular, not just like you're a rogue and there's something to steal or anything. It's just it's like there's more kind of you know it's it's got this this sense of exploration to it, and I really really appreciate that. And out of the whole series i'm a huge fan series. is is this a is is arcadia is it a, a a setting that all these things take place in or is that just the this is just the platform to deliver this cool oh. information to people yeah it's just the name of the magazine okay <laughs> which is a good yeah. name i like it it kind of calls out to to what they want you know this like this i, I don't know this this halcyon age of of D &D, um mm -hmm. That's uh, that we're in. So it feels like a celebration in a lot of ways. And uh, like I said, it's given a lot of really good freelancers, not just writers, but also artists, uh, a fantastic outlet. Yeah. Artemis in the uh, Artemis 2814 in chat is saying that they're getting ready to use some of the monsters from the second issue. Oh, yeah. So that's awesome. Gosh. I got to go look it up. I, I read it because there's there's one comes out uh, each month at this point, although it's on pause now because um, as they mentioned in the letter from the editor rates, they had this three issue burst ready to go. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, well, if that works, we'll do more. So I don't actually know when the next one is going to come out. I don't think it's going to be April, but, uh, but hopefully we get more soon because they're very good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, of course we'll, uh, we'll be keeping an eye on it here on Albert soup. So feel free to swing on by and, and, and check us out and see when the, the, the next issue comes out. Um, also, I mean, you Very did cool. mention Patreon. We should go ahead and mention the Saving Throw Patreon. Everyone should yeah, swing we should. on over there. <laughs> join that. Join into that. Also, keep an eye, eye out for the announcements uh, because the, the 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 Patreon is changing and the Exploration Society is is growing and um, expanding in a lot of really cool ways. Uh, and uh, yeah, Chef Alberti is 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 ready to uh, to to cook up some some meals for all the adventurers. <laughs> <laughs> and uh you know so 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 make sure to join up uh that way you can get uh oh man there's all kinds of cool swag there's like pins yeah there's one page adventures from the various folks who are part of uh saving throw and uh so much more stuff and you're gonna want to you're, you're gonna want to sign up before april 30th that way you can kind of get into the the the, the early stuff and get that founding members pin right so. absolutely uh I'll, on that exact same note um I, i've got to tell you that's that yesterday uh maybe the day before i can't remember there was a wonderful post about the the new saving throw logo and merchandise available with it and i absolutely got a t-shirt oh so you know you'll be seeing yeah. it on this body soon <laughs> <laughs> 